Welcome back to the Final Fantasy playthrough. Last part we did a whole bunch of trading quests in order to get to the Earth Cavern, where now we're gonna hopefully hunt down and kill a vampire that's been fucking with the nearby town. Oh my god, a gaggle of Shreks. <laughs> it's like Shrek 5, Shrek Dimensions. I'm registering that, and I'm gonna have it send people to the Hellfire comms page, and that will totally not backfire at us at all. Wow, what a timely reference, Maxi. Uh, hey, 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 being unethical knows no time bounds. Yeah, yeah, just shatters the bounds of time and space. Anything in particular uh, viewing audience needs to know about this cave. Well, it's definitely going to be a long trek. If you thought that the Marsh Cave was a pain in the ass and too hard and not worth playing the rest of the game... I did. You're... <laughs> you are in for a slap in the face. A rock hard slap. Earth Cavern is about twice as many floors and guess what? We have to go through them multiple times. Yes, Final Fantasy, because of the budget limitations, couldn't really make dungeons too long. So instead they lengthened their dungeons by having you go all the way down to a specific floor backtrack, and then descend even further. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. And, but probably the most irritating aspect of the entire dungeon, and this goes back also to the Marsh Cave, are the bats. They roam around. They get in your way. Sometimes they'll be blocking the only means you have of progressing, and you have to sit there, and wait there, and hopefully maybe the bat will move in the right direction so that you can bypass him. Maybe he won't. Maybe he'll actually remain in your way even longer. I've been meaning to ask, what is the deal with the bats? Are they just there for, like, aesthetic purposes, uh, thematic purposes, you know, evil equals bats, I guess, and here's Satan? No, these are bulls, dude. They're minotaurs. Bats are just there to build atmosphere. They're supposed to be dungeon NPCs. I say that, but I do want to clear up that there will be one instance where that is not the case. But for the vast, vast, vast majority of this point, bats mean nothing. They are just annoying. Also, I believe these Minotaurs carry on the trend that a lot of the enemies in this area follow, is that they're going to be weak to, or they're at least going to take more damage to fire. Even though this is a, an Earth-based dungeon, we're actually going to encounter a lot of undead enemies, similar to back in the Marsh Cave. Undead enemies have two very distinct weaknesses, fire and dia. Dia is actually a really crude shorthand for Dispel Undead. It's meant to be a spell that does nothing but damage undead enemies. Like, if you use it on regular enemies, it does nothing. And maybe some idiot kid gets the mistake that, Oh, this spell must do absolutely nothing. When in actuality, it's one of the best ones to take down the multitude of undead enemies in this entire game. So, undead enemies have this, this huge crutch that they're weak to two very common powerful spells. Remember that, because we're about to approach one of se those enemies. Ah, uh, the good old vampire has tricks, my friend. Prepare to die. This guy wishes he was Lord DeRoso, but sadly he's not. Instead, he's a boss that can go down in two turns if you use level 2 spells. I don't really have them because I didn't need them, slash I was broke. So instead I'm just going to use regular fire spells. And as you can see, they wreck him, just as well as they soar to the face. Do silver weapons deal extra damage? You know, like shooting a werewolf with a silver bullet. They do not in the NES version because they didn't program weapons correctly, but they also don't do it in later versions. Uh. There are weapons that do damage to undead, just not in this game. And this is a dick move on the game's half. I thought that maybe the tile after the vampire was a spike tile because his tile is clearly a sprite-initiated battle, so maybe Squareco forgot and put two boss tiles next to each other? No, no, I just got really unlucky and ended up getting into a fight with Shrek right <laughs> after the vampire. I was gonna say, what, are these like his bodyguards who were asleep on the job? They failed, man. I mean, that was supposed to be the boss. The boss that is apparently draining the earth of his energy. The boss who has wrecked an entire town and destroyed the clinic, of all things, and took him down easy. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I like the tiling of this cave, you know, with limitations and whatnot. It kind of reminds me of the surface of the moon, if it were brown. Huh. Yeah, the tiling and a lot of the sprite work in this game is top-notch. I'm pretty sure that's where a lot of the 
effort went into because I've gone over how many coding errors there was and I don't want to put that up to oh they were lazy like I'm, for, I'm pretty sure they didn't foresee a lot of these errors and maybe they couldn't afford as much playtesting as they yeah. would like. Also they didn't have much time let's stress that. Yeah let's put that out there I'm not saying this game is bad because of a lot of the bad programming if anything I think it gives the game its charm that so much of the game just doesn't work properly mm -hmm. but at the very least, the sprite work is amazing. Like I said, in early RPGs before Final Fantasy, you didn't even get to see your character. All you had was a text box with your character's information. You had to use your imagination. Final Fantasy decided to not only let you see one, but your entire party of characters performing all of their actions. That's amazing, and it's sort of a thing that would carry on in later Final Fantasies that graphical fidelity and presentation would be huge. They would be selling points for the game. Unfortunately, that only gets you so far. <laughs> because then you hit a point where people are like, yes, this game looks beautiful, but it kind of plays like doo-doo. I've noticed the two level spells, the level two spells, are good for group battles. Is there any truth in that? There is 100% truth, and in fact, that is the fact of the matter. Level 1 spells are good for individual enemies, or if you just want to exploit an elemental weakness. You want to start upgrading to level 2, 3, and up spells because of the fact that they are multi-hit spells. Especially in the early game, there's not a lot you can do with multi-hits. And in fact, it's very important because it will alleviate the fact that if you just start throwing out individual attacks, yeah, you may end up killing one enemy per turn, but that guy still got five enemy buddies <laughs> right behind him that are all ready to attack you this turn. Clearing out and having some form of crowd control helps immensely with this game. It's just a shame that when the e when the spells are at their most useful, your characters are probably not at a high enough level that you'll be able to cast them all that often. I've been meaning to ask, um, how does like the encounter thing Bob work, the mechanic work? Like what constitutes who goes first in the battle? Because sometimes I'll be like just jumped randomly and the enemies get a free uh, get get like a free hit off. Most people would like to tell you, oh, your speed determines it. Well, unfortunately, Final Fantasy 1 does not have a speed stat. The way turn order is, is uh, the way it comes up with it is that the game takes enemy A, B, C, or, or however many enemies there are, and then it lists party member A, B, C, D. From there, it does 50 random shuffles. So there really isn't a way to guarantee your characters go first. It's not 100% pure statistical random, but you have no way of controlling who goes first, who goes second. Which is a shame, and it is actually one of the reasons the thief is such a terrible class. Because you would think, oh, this character, he goes fast, he'll attack first. Nope, the game just has whatever character got the luck of the rotations first. Oh, fucking RNG. And my I add, those were not... Iguanas. They look like radioactive cats. They're effectively called basilisks in later versions, but the reason I got into that fight is, um, since we were talking about encounters and stuff, the entire west hallway of that floor, every single tile is spiked. So you will get an encounter no matter what on every single tile. And every single one of those encounters will include at least one giant. This is both a good and bad thing. If you're a casual player, first time playing, you have no idea what you're doing, you're super lost, and you end up in the Hall of Giants, as it's called, you're gonna end up getting an encounter every single step, and giants are no easy foe, so you may end up getting yourself killed on accident. However, the good aspect of the Hall of Giants is that giants, much like the ogres, have a high experience point and money drop so that is another point in this game that is really good for level grinding and money grinding so where exactly are we now when we defeated the vampire we got a ruby and the whole purpose of the ruby was to give it to the gigas who was blocking this because one of the townspeople mentions that there's a sage who may be able to help us because if we had continued to go within the Cavern of Earth past the Vampire, we would have reached a dead end. So... <laughs> so no, I'm just looking at that thing in the bottom right, like, oh my god, I don't even want to be here, but I can't get outside the menu. 
He didn't want to come to work today. He called in, but they said, no, we kind of have Warrior of Lights for you to kill. And by kill, we mean get killed, because these guys are not going to be a difficult fight at all. Yeah, our two football players and two bards to boo. Whoopee. Yeah, the Red Mages do kind of look like bards. I'm so glad that Final Fantasy would later introduce actual bards. And then when you get to Final Fantasy XI, you have bards and Red Mages. Mm hmm but because we reached the dead end at the Cavern of Earth, that's supposed to be an indication that go back to the entrance and not keep exploring around the Cavern of Earth getting in more fights. Don't worry, you'll eventually find the way. No, you're supposed to leave. Yeah. And you're going to end up finding this mage, wizard, sage dude on... This continent's actually called the Devil's Tail because if you look, it's sort of a triangle on the end of a peninsula. Looks kind of cool on the world map. The world map is very well designed. Um, it has a lot of neat geographical quirks about it. Like, you have an entire continent shaped like a bird. And I just think that when you have some fun with your world map, then, uh, you know, everything starts to fall in place, and it makes it look less barren. When you sort of just throw in the tropes, like, well, we kind of need an ocean there. Sort of need a desert. It, it takes the fun out of it. But if you're going to have fun with your world map, so am I. And I appreciate that. I just like imagining, like, the designers coming up with all these interesting places with the threat of bankruptcy just looming over them. Like, what must have been going through their minds? I think it sort of gives you both ends of the spectrum. There's the fact that we're going bankrupt, so let's try our damnedest. But at the same time, we're going bankrupt, so have fun. At least that's how I would see it. There would be certain things that... Like, if it mattered, I would put extra hours. I would work so fucking hard. I would want the characters to- or I would love the players to love it. But at the same time, I would also enjoy the freedom that, hey, I, even if this game does okay, I may still be out of a job. So might as well put my mark in here, have some fun, know that I didn't leave anything behind. Mm -hmm. In short, go big or go home. And also, Sabertooth Tiger! Not quite, just regular tigers, d despite the, uh, dentition. <laughs> I also like how this one cave has a pretty unique battle background. I know it's only a tile, or not even a tile, it's like just a couple squares at the top, but, you know, little touches, again, to add that graphical element to it, because before, battles were either you moving along like Zelda and doing your own fight, or true RPG, here's a text box of what you just did. Unfortunately, Final Fantasy has no Gruze, and you are not at risk to be eaten by one in the dark. I thought you were saying Gruze for a second, though. No, just a Gru. Also, I may have not mentioned it, but your HP stat is the only stat that goes up every level up. The thing is, is that certain classes at certain preset levels, so this is not random, but at certain levels, certain classes will get a bonus HP bonus. So they'll get extra, extra HP. Okay. Fighters, being the bulky defensive class, have a lot of HP bonus levels. Makes sense. Red mages have sorta, of, kind of, and of course, red mages... Or not red, of course, black mages will have the least. Black mages are meant to be tissue paper fucking thin. But, at the very least, they can nuke the planet later in the game. That's an actual spell, isn't it, nuke? Yes. <laughs> and then, unfortunately, you're sitting there with your monk. And, yeah, the monk is a glass cannon, low defense, but high, high damage. To the point that he will actually bypass fighters in terms of raw damage. With his bare hands. And then there's the thief who has low defense, can't equip a lot of armor, can't equip a lot of weapons, has low attack stat, can't use magic until much, 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 much later. His only gimmick is supposed to be, well, at least he can run away, but the running away mechanic is not programmed correctly, so he's left with nothing. <laughs> Poor thief. Uh, I think I remember when I was playing South Park, The Stick of Truth, an excellent... Paper Mario-esque turn-based RPG, I might add. I played the Fee Fly either last or second to last. They improve him slightly, you know, when they actually fix the running mechanic. And yes, I know, later on in the game he gets better. But the fact that 
the hard part of the game is the beginning, and that's when you need your character team to be very cohesive and working very well to take down enemies. That's where he falls the most. Like, I can't forget the fact that, oh, he gets better when everyone else is just as OP. So, it doesn't work that way, guys. You saw the jump in difficulty from, like, the first dungeon, which was literally you just walk forward and fight Garland, to the Marsh Cave. You need to start off on a good foot. Exactly, that's why I have these high damage but defensive characters and well-rounded mages, which, you know, in the NES version, there is no argument against using a red mage. There is literally nothing that the other two mages can't do better than the red mage, except, like, one or two spells, but oh well, you don't even need them. Are we getting close to the bottom of this place now? Because it's all starting to, like, blend together. Well, it should because those three fours we had already been through... We finally got past where the vampire was. When we went to see that sage, he gave us the scepter. And the scepter was meant to open that tomb casket block thing. And it, it's a little annoying that you have to go into your menu, select the right item in the right location, and have it work out. Yeah, that's frustrating, but 1980s. Do you know the early Pokemon games where uh, you kids won't appreciate this nowadays, but back in the day, if you wanted to surf, you had to go into the menu and use it. You couldn't just click upon like a watery bit of, uh, well, just the water, basically. The amount of lost frames just using HMs. It's terrible! <laughs> it goes against every speedrunning sensibility in my body. Yet, Gen 1 is still the most speedrun gen of all Pokemon, but now we're finally in the final floor. There's really just two more floors, but the fact that you have to backtrack floors 1, 2, and 3 twice, because you have to go down, up, then back down, by the time you reach the new floors and get lost in them, because you most likely will, mm -hmm. it's just very frustrating, but it was one of the ways they had to elongate this game. Once again, this was a gamble. It... And if a lot of the money was going towards making stuff look nice, music sounding nice, the dungeon design can't be too faulted with coming just shy short of, wow, this is really fucking annoying. <laughs> wow, you fucked those trolls up. They probably think Final Fantasy 2 is the best one. They probably think we should be playing the GBA version. <laughs> I also like how they're fire bats, and if you play Zelda, you're like, Don't touch me! But it's okay, they can touch you. They won't hurt you. This looks very suspicious, although I do want that crystal. Well, it is sort of the main quest. I mean, other than getting princes high on herb, the main quest of this game is supposed to be reviving the four crystals to bring the elements back. Kind of similar to what happened in Dissidia? <laughs> we're gonna get to that. Oh, we're gonna get to Dissidia, but... We got a boss fight to talk about. We got the first of the four great fiends, Lich. This is the fiend of Earth. This is the fiend responsible for rotting the Earth and draining the Earth crystal of his en of its energy. Well, I've heard Spoonie in like his Cat Monkey videos talk about how sick, nasty Liches are, but I never really understood what are Liches. I believe they're a spirit of... Oh, I'm thinking of a wraith or something? I want to say that it's a spirit of someone who tries to elongate their life, and so their body comes back, but maintains all the injuries of when they first died. So, from that story alone, yes, Lich is undead. He is weak to fire, he is weak to Dia, and he will get absolutely wrecked by those two spells. However, he does have level 2 ice, which is multi-hit, and could very well knock out your whole party. He's also got... Sleep 2. Not as bad, but again, status effects and ice spells. He's a huge difficulty jump again, and you're probably not in tip-top shape after having to traverse the entire dungeon multiple times. So once again, you want to plan and pace yourself very well when you're going through dungeons. Don't just take them as, oh, this is the next field I have to walk through. No, you got to plan for dungeons. Well, I was looking at Wikipedia and it says Elytra is a type of undead creature, kind of goes without saying, but it says it's more intelligent than the shambling, shuffling zombies of yore, which kind of makes sense. You want an intelligent creature to be one of the four fiends, and I guess that's enough for today, so we'll see you next time for more Final Fantasy. Bye-bye for now.